Welcome to the module on accessing user data from Microsoft Graph. Hi, I'm Andrew Connell. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the area of Microsoft 365 development. I have a lot of experience with SharePoint development, Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Teams, developing add-ins for Microsoft Office, as well as developing applications for Microsoft Identity, including Azure Active Directory. This video is the first in a series of videos on this Microsoft Learning Module. This video is also part of a playlist that includes all the videos that are associated with this module so you can watch them in order. The playlist and all its included videos are associated with a Microsoft Learning Module that includes hands-on lab exercises and additional resources. Check the notes for this video and the associated playlist for more information and where to find the Microsoft Learning Module. Okay, let's get started. Users are at the core of most operations in Microsoft 365. And Microsoft Graph enables developers full control over the lifecycle of users in Microsoft 365, including creating, updating, and deleting users, and also listing users in the organization. In this module, you're going to learn how to use Microsoft Graph to work with users in Microsoft 365, including the required permissions. After an overview on Microsoft Graph, we're then going to see how to access the Microsoft Graph, and then how to develop our user centric apps with Microsoft Graph. And then finally, we'll touch on how to access users using the Microsoft Graph. The Microsoft 365 developer vision focuses on the user experience and their data. And as a developer, you can bring your application into the user experience with over 1.2 billion users of Office worldwide. This is a huge opportunity to provide a window into your application to connect their data to your application. There are currently over 850 million events created each month and a total of over 400 petabytes of data stored in the service that can add value to your users. The Microsoft Graph is the gateway to your data in the Microsoft Cloud, as you can see. The Microsoft Cloud includes multiple services and data types that we can take advantage of from Office 365, and it's all considered part of the Microsoft 365 platform. Developers can integrate the signed in user's email, calendar, contacts, and tasks into custom apps. We can work with content in SharePoint lists and files and document libraries and in OneDrive, channels and content within Microsoft Teams and users within Azure Active Directory. There are many different services that developers can take advantage of in their custom apps. Many of these services have their own APIs that developers can interact with. However, this can be challenging to go to each of these individual services with their individual endpoints. Each API may have its own permission model which means that they can have individual access control configurations. Different endpoints for each service mean our custom application will need to obtain an access token from Azure AD for each of the different endpoints. One of the benefits of Microsoft Graph is that it serves as a proxy endpoint to all of these other services. Microsoft Graph encompasses things such as Office 365, Windows 10, Enterprise Mobility, and Security, and it brings all of these different services under one unified endpoint, graph.microsoft.com. The advantage to using Microsoft Graph is that it allows developers to have just a single endpoint, a resource, which means you're only going to need a single access token to authenticate the different services. Each service still has its own individual permissions so that everything is still secured in an individual way. A single endpoint makes it easier for developers to build applications. Microsoft Graph also enables easy navigation of entities and the relationships between these entities. And while there are many different Microsoft 365 services, such as OneDrive for Business or Outlook for contacts and uh, calendars, these different entities are related to each other. And these relationships are in the Microsoft Graph, which makes it easy to navigate from one entity to another, even if it's across different underlying endpoints. Microsoft Graph supports two options to authenticate. One option is with Azure Active Directory only or a work and school account. And the other option is converged auth which means that you can either use Azure AD or a Microsoft account. And in this case, you can use the exact same code in the Microsoft Graph, the same endpoints and the same SDK to get my files, either if they're in OneDrive Consumer or in OneDrive for Business. And the same is true for calendar, contacts, and email in Outlook.com or in Office 365. And the nice thing about this is that the data that you fetch is all dependent on the login of the user that signed in. So you don't have to write special code or use different APIs or endpoints to get the data for consumer accounts or for business accounts. As previously stated, Microsoft Graph supports both Microsoft accounts and Azure AD accounts, also referred to as work and school accounts. Nothing in Microsoft Graph's APIs or SDKs is unique to the sign-in process. The code is the same and the sign-in determines which services in Microsoft Graph will access. 
If the user is signed in with a Microsoft account, the files endpoint maps to the OneDrive consumer endpoint, and while the work and school sign-ins map to the OneDrive for business. This is just but one example. To determine which account type your app supports, or if it supports both, you set a specific setting in the associated Azure AD app in the Azure AD Admin Center. You can use Microsoft Graph to access the relationships, documents, contacts, and preferences that are contextually relevant to the signed in user. The user resource provides straightforward way for you to access and manipulate user resources without having to do additional calls, look up specific authentication information, and directly issue queries against other Microsoft Graph resources. The user resource is the gateway to the resources related to the user. The user can be the currently signed in user or another user if your identity and application has been granted the necessary permissions to do that. So what kinds of things can you do with the Microsoft Graph user resource? You can create new users for your organization or update the resources and relationships for existing users. And you can use Microsoft Graph to do the following user management tasks. Create or delete users in your organization, listing a user's group memberships and determine whether a user is a member of a group, list the users who report to a user and assign members to the user, or retrieve or update a photo for the user. You can also view, query, and update a user's calendar and calendar groups associated with the user, including list and create events on a user's calendar, view tasks assigned to a user, free, uh, find free meeting times for a set of users, and get a list of reminders set on a user's calendar. You can also configure user's mail settings and contact lists and send mail on a user's behalf, including listing messages and sending new mail, creating and listing a user contacts and organizing contacts and folders, as well as retrieving and updating mailbox folders and settings. You can also maximize relevance in your application by promoting recently used or trending documents and contacts associated with the user. And you can use the Microsoft Graph to do things like returning documents of recently reviewed and, no and modified by a user, return documents and sites trending around a user's activity, listing documents shared with the user through email or OneDrive for Business. Now let's explore the Microsoft Graph user resource endpoint. There are two different ways that you can access users through Microsoft Graph. You can access the signed in user through the me alias at graph.microsoft.com slash v1.0 slash me. This alias maps to the same endpoint as going to the slash users slash ID of the currently signed in user. To access a specific user, use either their ID or their user principal name. So for example, it would be slash user slash ID or slash user slash UPN. Developers can also use one of the many Microsoft Graph SDKs to obtain a user. For example, to get a user with the Microsoft Graph.net SDK, you would use the following code. You first get an authenticated Graph client uh, for the Microsoft Graph, and then you would use the .me.request.getAsync method to get the current user, or to get a list of a or to get a specific user, you would go to the .users, and then in the uh, array, you pass in the ID of the user you're looking for to make the same call. To do user operations, you're going to need one of the following permissions. The specific permission required will depend on the operation that you want to do. For example, if you're creating, editing, or deleting a user, one of the right permissions is required. And some permissions can be granted by a user while others must be granted to the app by an administrator. You've got delegated permissions that are granted by users, and then you've also got application permissions that are granted by administrators. Each resource has an additional reference resource, such as their email addresses, calendar items, and files in the OneDrive Consumer or OneDrive for Business uh, endpoints.